Let's look at uh, verse 9. Not of works. So all of this, that's why it's not of works. There is no work salvation involved here. This is a beautiful thing. So that's why this faith is distinguished from Habakkuk 2. It's not of works. Why? Lest any man should boast. So God gave this salvation by faith where it's no work involved. Why? Because lest any man boast about their works. Oh, look what I did, God. See, I'm good enough to go to heaven. This is what all I did for you. So then God says, no. So I die on the cross so I can show you that your works don't count for your salvation. Now, see, that's the thing is that if you show these two verses to cults who insist, oh, I believe salvation by grace like you do. I believe salvation by faith like you do. But some of these cults, you better watch out. Seventh-day Adventists are especially tricky because if you hear their testimony, they sound like a saved, genuine Christian like you do. But if you look at their doctrinal creed, they actually teach that if you have real grace, real salvation by faith, then what? There should be works out of your life. But if you show them Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it'll show over here. No, this grace is what? It has no works. No works. And what's even more plain than that is verse 8. Verse 8 is powerful where it says, not of yourselves. These, uh, these Seventh-day Adventists are very similar with Calvinists, which is very dangerous. It's a doctrine called Lordship Salvation. Basically, if we don't see you live a... Uh, if there's no special change in your life where we don't see you coming to church, where we don't see you clean up your sins, then you know what? You're not genuinely saved. No, that person who really believes that and betted his salvation on that, that person's not genuinely yeah. saved then. Because the verse is not of yourselves. It's nothing you do. What, it depends on what you do. Then we know you're really safe. What are you talking about? That, that didn't, that's contrary to that verse. Now there's another extreme. The other extreme, which is so weird, is that some of these people, they use verse 9 to deny dispensational salvation. Okay, remember what I... You heard a little bit what dispensational salvation is. Basically, there was a different salvation in the Old Testament that is different from the New Testament church. Isn't that simple enough to understand? There's no doubt there's a difference of salvation. These people were keep keeping the law on the Sabbath. You don't. These people stoned people to death. They took works as seriously. They stoned you to death if you took God's name in vain. You and I don't. These people go by the law of Moses. We go by the law of the Spirit. So, see, there's obviously a difference over here. There's obviously a difference. But these people will claim that at verse 9, if you insist there was a salvation by works system at the Old Testament, then it invalidates verse 9. Then these people could boast to God. Look at all these works that I did, God. So, it's contrary to Ephesians 2.9. Look, this is more simple than you think. You ready for this? Ephesians 2.9 cannot operate until it's based off of what? Verse 8. Grace are ye saved through faith. What is that based on? His gift, right? What is that based on? That's based on verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by what? Grace, Grace ye are saved. Based on what? Verse 4. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. It's based on what? Right here when he died on the cross. Goo -goo, goo -goo. The Old Testament, he didn't die on the cross yet. Oh, it's more simple than you think. So until he died on the cross, then this can operate, see? It can operate that you're saved by grace, faith, that's salvation, it's a gift, it's nothing of yourself, not of works lest any man should boast. That cannot operate until Jesus died on the cross. Use your head, all right? They're not using their heads on that. That cannot operate, because think about this. Why was I able to talk about this, guys? Why was I able to talk about faith? Why was I able to talk about, it's a gift, it's a gift? Because I started with what? The cross here, where he died for us. Until he did that, all this was able to operate. <clears throat> Now, I know that with onliners, I'm being very unpopular. And you think that I'm being very mean when I uh, address wrong doctrines. But 
You've got to understand in the Pauline epistles, which is based off of Christian doctrine, there are so many, there is so much wrong doctrines in our churches to address. Think about it. If there is a Satan, is it, isn't it his job to make sure there is wrong doctrine in churches? Yes, there has to be. So that's his job. His job is to make sure that there is wrong doctrine amongst Christian churches. And use your head. If there's a Satan who gives wrong doctrines, wouldn't he give a lot of wrong doctrines? Yes. And if that's logical that he would do that, isn't it the right thing to do for a preacher to expose all these wrong doctrines? And if there's a lot of wrong doctrines, doesn't that mean there's a lot of wrong preachers preaching wrong doctrine? A lot. A lot. Yes. So that has to be addressed. Maybe some onlineers think that I'm arrogant where I criticize anybody out there and I'm the only one that's right, but that's not the case. There are plenty of Bible-believing preachers that you've seen in our website that we refer you to, and we don't critique these preachers publicly online. As a matter of fact, I sometimes receive correction from these preachers. Why? Because I know my age. See, I'm humble enough to admit that. I don't know everything. I don't know everything. I don't let my degrees or background walk over people. I only do that with people teaching wrong doctrine and who are not in a Bible-believing group. All right? It's important that you find your right group and that you have to teach right doctrine. That's what it is in warfare and teams. You have to find the right team. That is natural. You're not an independent rogue. All right? You're not an independent rogue doing whatever you want. All right, now that we've established that fact, let's start off with Ephesians chapter 2. And verse 10. <clears throat> the Bible says here, For we are His workmanship. So that means all of us are God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So God's workmanship that He created us to be is that He created us based in Christ Jesus. You see that condition again? based in Christ Jesus, if we get into Him, that we're supposed to do good works out of our lives, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So beforehand, God ordained that when we do our daily walk, that that's what our daily walk would consist of. We should walk in good works. So that's a simple explanation. And guess which doctrine always comes out that messes up the Pauline epistles. It's Calvinism. Calvinism and hyperdispensationalism, I told you in a long time ago video, are the two worst doctrines that contaminate saved Christian churches. So you're going to see the Calvinism problem again and again consistently over here. So when a person has received the Lord Jesus Christ for his salvation, God Almighty up in heaven created him to be a person who is ordained for good works. But the Calvinists, they take it to believe that which God hath before ordained. Do you see that verse? Which God hath before ordained. So they took that as a meaning that there's a Calvinistic God up in heaven who forced a person outside of his free will to become a person. Before, the, before creation, supposedly, God has forced a person against his free will or elected or selected some people to be against free will and forced to what? Become saved. Forced to do good works. But God says no. It's should. That they should do good works. Over here, the person is forced long time ago before the foundation of the world. So because of that, that's supposedly against free will. So during right over here, the BCs, that's what they think. Long before the BCs. But we believe, no, it's currently right now in the 80s 
we believe that a person, when he, look at that verse, in Christ Jesus, when that person's in Christ Jesus, then the God, what does he do? He created us to be a type of person that should live our lives in good works. Did you notice that? That's the key. The key is, is that we believe it happened during the 80s over here. And this is based off of a condition. Condition. What is the condition, Pastor? In Christ Jesus. Remember the Calvinist problem with the Ephesians chapter 1? They had that problem. In Ephesians 1, remember that they said that He had chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. So God chose people before the foundation of the world to be saved people. No, it shows that what God chose before the foundation of the world is that those in Christ Jesus, those who accept that condition, I'm going to be in Jesus Christ, that they would be what? Save people. Right. Who are the ones who are supposed to do good works? Those who are in Christ Jesus. If they don't believe that, then I have this question then. Then if you get rid of in Christ Jesus, then are you saying that the Lord ordained lost sinners, Satan's children, to do good works? That don't make sense. So it makes more sense those who are based upon this condition in Christ Jesus, that they should live their lives doing spiritual things for God Almighty. So hence goes the heresy of Calvinism that we should avoid.